this video depicts a common type of bilingual development in young children that most parents are concerned about, which is where one language is used much more than the other. This video will give some suggestions to parents on how they can get their children to speak both of, of their languages. So let's have a look at this story of a bilingual English-Japanese bilingual child called Kenji. Kenji is a bilingual two-year-old who lives with his American mother and Japanese father in Japan. His father works full-time and his mother works three days a week. On the days when his mother works, he goes to daycare. Kenji hears Japanese from his father in the evenings and from his teachers and friends in daycare. He hears English only from his mother, but she speaks to him all day on the days when he does not go to daycare. So, overall, he gets plenty of input in both languages on an everyday basis, and he's well on his way to becoming bilingual in Japanese and English. When Kenji was about one and a half years old, he could already say a few words. Kenji's mom was very excited when Kenji started speaking. She noticed that these words were mostly in Japanese and not in English, but it didn't bother her then. After all, he was just learning. It was just great that he was speaking, so it didn't really matter to her which language it was. Kenji's mom just continued to speak English to Kenji. Whenever he said a word in Japanese, she responded in English. She read in a bilingual parenting book somewhere that as long as she keeps speaking her language, the child would eventually speak it. Or so she thought at that time. By the time Kenji was two years old, he could say many words and string them up into short sentences. However, he did it only in Japanese, which seemed to be his stronger language now. He could say as few simple words in English, such as no, up, and please. But he clearly preferred speaking Japanese even to his English-speaking mother. Kenji's mom continued to speak English to him all the time. But no matter how careful and consistent she was to use English only, Kenji did not speak much English back to her. Just right after his second birthday, Kenji's American grandparents came to Japan to visit Kenji. It was the grandparents' first time to meet their cute grandson. Grandpa looked forward to bringing him to the park and buying him some ice cream. Grandma looked forward to playing and reading with him. Both grandparents only spoke English, and they spoke it to Kenji. Kenji understood everything his grandma and grandpa said to him. When grandpa asked Kenji in English which ice cream flavor he liked, Kenji pointed to his favorite flavor. When grandma asked him if he wanted to read a book, Kenji pulled out his favorite book from the bookshelf. He spoke a little English to his grandparents, just like he does to his mother. But when he wanted to express more complex ideas, he used Japanese. In those instances, Kenji's mom had no choice but to become Kenji's interpreter and explain to grandma and grandpa what Kenji was saying. Grandma and grandpa were happy anyway to spend time with Kenji despite the fact that he spoke little English. They hope that when they come to see him again next year, he would be able to communicate better with them. 
Kenji's mom was getting worried about Kenji's bilingual development. It seemed like his Japanese was developing fast. He was speaking longer sentences and using more difficult words in Japanese. However, his English never seemed to progress beyond the couple of words which he used very often. For example, the word no, which is probably a favorite word for many toddlers in their terrible twos. Kenji's mom decided to look for expert information on bilingual development on the internet. She found out about the Harmonious Bilingualism Network, or Habernet, and decided to ask for a consultation with an expert. In her consultation session, she asked for advice on how to encourage Kenji to speak more English. The Habernet consultant advised her to create a need for the child to use the language. And she also advised Kenji's mom to try prompting Kenji to switch to English using discourse strategies. The consultant also gave a practical tip. Get a puppet and convince Kenji that the puppet only understands English. Kenji's mom decided to try the idea right away and got a cat puppet. She put it on during playtime with Kenji and explained that the puppet could only understand English. During a make-believe tea party, Kenji tried talking in Japanese to the puppet. Instead of letting Kenji continue speaking Japanese, Kenji's mom made the puppet pretend not to understand what Kenji said. Truth the puppet, Kenji's mom also requested for Kenji to repeat what he said in English. Surprisingly, Kenji obliged and said it again in English. It seemed like Kenji really wanted to have a tea party with the puppet, so he was very willing to speak it. After many successful episodes with the puppet, Kenji's mom decided to try doing it herself. When Kenji tried to speak Japanese, Kenji's mom gave him a cue that he should speak English. She tilted her head to one side and said, Huh? And just as the same as when it was with the puppet, this made Kenji realize that he should say it in English and not Japanese. And so he repeated it in English. Kenji's mom continued to encourage Kenji to speak English this way. Once Kenji knew that English is the language to be used with his mother, he spoke it more and more. Kenji's mom didn't have to say, huh, or what, to Kenji's Japanese very often after that, because he used less Japanese. Although Kenji's mom was worried if Kenji would ever speak English to her, she was glad that with some help from a puppet, and with the encouragement she gave him, Kenji was well on his way to becoming an active speaker of Japanese and English. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.